80 million years ago, much of the North American continent is covered by shallow seas, referred to as the Western Interior Seaway. This massive area is home to an assortment of large and dangerous sea life, from large predatory fish to even larger marine reptiles. On the rocky shores, however, is a different type of ocean hunter. Hesperornis are tall, flightless birds that spend most of their lives hunting at sea. At this time of year, however, they come onto the rocky shores to breed. Their wings are almost useless, so to swim, they propel themselves with their legs. This adaptation, however, makes them awkward on land. They have to come ashore to make nests for their young, but every day, the parents leave the nesting sites and waddle to the shoreline. As the sun rises, they wade into the waves and swim out to deeper water in search of fish. At nearly two meters, they are quite large, but in these waters, they are near the bottom of the food chain, and every day, they risk their lives against a sea of monsters. The main group swims to where they know fish will be. However, their swimming and splashing creates a lot of noise, and predators always know when a flock of Hesperornis are nearby. When they see the massive school of small fish, they begin to swim towards their targets. However, there are many other shapes already harvesting this bounty. The small bait fish are being harassed by a larger species, Enchidus, the marine saber-tooth. And even more threatening, a pair of huge plesiosaurs, Elasmosaurus, are plucking away at the school with their long necks and needle-sharp teeth. The Hesperornis dive right in regardless, using their legs to torpedo forward and through the massive school of fish, each one snaring a fish in their two-filled beaks. Whenever a Hesperornis has completed an attack, they will then return to the surface for a breath of air, before descending back for another attack. One Hesperornis, with only one wing, takes a break at the surface to catch his breath, seeing another of his kind do the same. Suddenly, the second Hesperornis is pulled back under, and a line of blood appears where he just swam. The one-winged Hesperornis pulls his head under the water, and saw a new species has entered the fray. A small group of Xyphactinus has appeared out of nowhere, and one of them swallowed the still-struggling Hesperornis down its throat. The large, five-meter-long fish attacked everything except the Elasmosaurus, their long, blade-like teeth cutting through fish and bird alike, causing chaos amongst the feeding frenzy. But the new predators had missed the one-winged Hesperornis, who tried to distance themselves from the newcomers, attempting to feast on his flock. Suddenly, there were splashes all around him. Looking up, he saw over a dozen pterosaurs were skimming the top of the water, trying to catch the small fish in their toothless jaws. The Hesperornis didn't know whether to look above or below the surface. When suddenly, a huge shark, Gritoxyrhina, bursts out of the water and catches one of the pterosaurs in its jaws, before slamming back into the water and pulling the flyer to its doom. The pterosaurs fly back into the air, not wanting a similar fate, and the Hesperornis dives back beneath the waves. There were predators everywhere. One Zephactinus pursues a Hesperornis, but is hit from the side by a Crotoxyrhina, which rips out a large chunk of its body, and as the gutted fish dies, a school of Enchidus are already ripping at the body. Another newcomer, the massive turtle, Archelon, glides over the carnage looking for jellyfish, completely calm despite the massive amount of blood mixing with the seawater. The two Elasmosaurus glide past a few Hesperornis, trying to get to the surface, but the marine birds have little to fear. These long-necked giants only feed on small sea life, and go for the baitfish and the Enchidus. As predators fight predators, the one-winged Hesperonis darts under a Zephactinus that is preoccupied with swallowing a chunk of meat. The agile bird grabs another fish in his jaws and returns to the surface, but as he does, he sees something else approaching. The true apex predator of the western interior seaway, Tylosaurus. At 14 meters, this massive mosasaur feeds on just about anything, and the mass feeding frenzy has drawn him in. The Hesperornis gets to the surface and takes a breath, before peering back down to assess the situation. 
All the predators scatter to avoid the Tylosaurus. Even the pair of Elasmosaurus swim at a pace not seen before. The huge Mosasaur peers up and targets the one wing in his Speronis. He then moves in for the kill. The aquatic bird swims as fast as he can and heads towards the Archelon, seeing two of his kind already hiding under the giant, leaving no room for him. He sped past them with the Tylosaurus closing in. He too ignored the large turtle, going for the smaller yet easier meal. The Hesperonis found himself amongst a school of jellyfish, each half a meter wide. The Tylosaurus was right behind him, and as the reptile opened its jaws, the Hesperonis suddenly turned upwards and propelled himself over the Tylosaurus, just escaping its clutches. When the Mosasaur shut his jaws, he got a mouthful of stinging jellyfish. The poison wasn't enough to kill him, but it was exceedingly painful, as the large reptile thrashed his head to remove the burning tentacles in his jaws, the Hesperonis made his escape. Many of his kind were now on their way back to the shore with bellies full of fish to feed their young. Once they had fed their chicks, they would go out to sea again and again till nightfall. This was the life of a Hesperonis, and indeed most life above and below the waves. Every day, these birds brave one of the most dangerous seaways the world has ever known. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the deep diving bird of the Cretaceous, Hesperonis. Hesperonis are a genus of aquatic birds that lived between 83 million and 78 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. This genus contains nine species, eight of which lived in North America, and another that lived in Russia. The first fossils were found in Kansas in 1871 by Charles Marsh. Eventually, over 60 specimens were found, including complete skeletons. This gave scientists a great understanding of the genus, including helping to understand the links between dinosaurs and birds. Hesperonis were quite large, reaching lengths up to 2 meters long, they had a long keratinous beak like modern birds, but still had teeth, with the bottom jaw having them all the way, and the upper jaws having them in the back half of the beak. The roof of the mouth had pits where the teeth of the lower jaw could lock into when the beak was closed. The wings of Hesperonis were tiny, but may have been used for steering in the water, or otherwise may have been vestigial. The feet and legs of this genus are commonly contested about. They were the primary mode of movement, using them like a cormorant or, more accurately, a loon to paddle through the water. This is based on limb length, shape of the hip, and position of the hip socket. Because of this, they would have been very awkward on land, with some theories stating that they couldn't stand upright at all, and would have slid across the land like a seal. This isn't known for certain, however, and some more recent studies show that they were able to walk upright, just not very well. It's not even known if their feet were webbed, with there being a 50-50% chance that they did indeed have webbing between their toes, or they had lobbed toes, similar to modern grebs. The region they lived in is much warmer than today, and they were likely a common sight out on the oceans they lived in. Some species have been found in freshwater deposits, so a few of them may have been exclusively freshwater hunters, or hunted there occasionally while spending most of their time out at sea. They likely nested on the coastline, trying to get to areas like rocky outcrops that would have been difficult for land or sea predators to access. Hesperonis chicks grew up very quickly, reaching almost full size within a year. Given the environment they lived in, they are likely to have lived fast as well. The Western Interior Seaway is well known for being the home of many massive and dangerous predators, from huge fish, sharks larger than a great white, and mosasaurs that could get up to the lengths of a small whale. Despite being quite large for water birds, Hesperonis was likely near the bottom of the food chain, only feeding on small fish and crustaceans, not to mention having to avoid dinosaurs on land and even being targeted by pterosaurs from the sky. Hesperonis no doubt live harsh and fast lives. One individual was found to have had bite marks on its leg from a small pliosaur, but the leg had gotten infected meaning it survived its brush with death to swim another day. We do have a modern bird that is very similar to Hesperonis, 
the flightless cormorant from the Galapagos Islands, a species that has lost its ability to fly on its path to becoming more aquatic. Hesperornis is an excellent example of a smaller species surviving in a world filled with deadly carnivores, and though it may look a little awkward, it was clearly enough to get its species through such a challenging lifestyle. But what do you think of Hesperornis? Do you see it now as a Cretaceous battler, or as the Times dopey penguin slash cormorant? Let me know what lesser known species you'd like me to cover in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching.